guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, and today we're gonna switch up the content again and bring Game Over back onto the channel. He is like the level one god in terms of the first player to reach Legendary Arena as level one, I believe the first player to hit 4,000 trophies as level one, and now he's reclaimed his record as the highest trophies ever for a level one at 4,104 trophies just incredible he took it from amaterasu who previously had it at 40 40 or 40 33 i believe that was the last video i shared a month or two ago so guys i'm excited to bring these replays back to you guys these are really fun to watch and uh, i do want to give a huge shout out to game over's youtube channel it's called Firk. well it'll, the link will be in the description below but it's called firkin yilmaz that's his name clash Rory al and be sure to check out that he uploads level one content over there so here's the deck that he used guys it's it's really really effective as a level one obviously level ones uh they have to defend against everything as we will see on these replays this was the replay that took him there to the new world record against zodiac here so let's start with this one and you're just gonna see some tremendous gameplay it kind of makes me think i wonder if game over was on a max account if he could possibly potentially be one of the top players in the world you know i i don't see why not just in terms of how many matches he's played how familiar he is with the interactions in defending and given the advantage of actually having princess towers that do damage and can take damage like a normal player uh i would just be curious about uh how how well he would do on top ladder and you can see a beautiful bandit there kind of to tank a little bit as that e wizard redirected that bandit baby dragon and then going in and getting the charge on the opponent's tower so sparky obviously here is going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting in this deck for game over and here it is sparky takes out that uh wizard and then immediately drops that skarmy around that royal giant and you can see just the royal giant does like 200 damage per hit or so and you only have 1400 hp so you have to defend royal giants you have to be very very careful defensively it's just incredible once you see like little directions like oh my that was a beautiful bandit play there dashed in front of sparky to tank for her and then really takes down that uh, right tower by the opponent with not even halfway into this very first match here so if you're a game over at this point you got to be feeling pretty good you have a tower down but you know it's going to be so difficult to defend this other tower here with still so much time left on the clock so ewis is going to go ahead and answer that baby dragon basically again you have to defend against everything now there's no big spell in the deck that we're watching right now which is good because big spells are so difficult to stop especially rockets we're gonna see some big spell replays before this video is over so royal giant gets a few connections there to the right tower taking it down we're still gonna go ahead and defend because we have to we cannot let a, a royal giant a, let alone a royal giant and a wizard go unmitigated into our king tower so again here just kind of reloading with a sparky in the back in the left lane we get a charge prince and an inferno dragon in the right lane we have to stop that beautiful answer on the bandit to the prince there of course the bandit is uh invincible when she is in her charge so even though the prince was in or i'm not sure if he was there but even if the prince is in his charge she will not take any damage regardless on that first hit so a beautiful job of protecting his king tower and now giving me giving him the opportunity to kind of reload here as we enter into the last 25 seconds of this match another beautiful defensive sequence here has again Inferno Dragon, the E-Wiz right in the center there, had the bandit to distract against that prince for just a moment, and now we have an E-Wiz, an Inferno Dragon, and a princess in the left lane. The opponent's going to have to answer this. Meanwhile, we're going to set up with another big sparky push here, hopefully end the game. Now, this is what he likes to do with this deck. You're seeing it kind of uh, take place in front of your eyes right now, guys. He likes to defend and then get just a big, big monster counter push going. And here it goes. Band is going to go ahead and charge onto that left tower. We have a spark is going to be reset unfortunately due to that e-wiz coming down from the opponent here and although we didn't get a ton of damage we were still able to get a few hundred hp off thanks to that bandit charge we're gonna have to defend again here leaning on the lumberjack the e-wiz really the quintessential defensive cards as far as legendary cards go now these players if you guys want to get involved in the level one scene i'll give you the clan info for nova one which is a great little community there they're always kind of competing with each other just really good people there
fair shot to Oche, another uh, level one content creator. I'll include his video, who leads the clan in the description below as well. And just like a really good environment, and they can help you guys find decks. Obviously, starting a new level one account, you guys might not have every other, every, well, obviously, you're not going to have every legendary card unlocked or even any legendary cards. This is the big monster push here, guys. Good luck dealing with this, even with the Royal Giant to kind of soak up some of that damage. We still have a full health Sparky. We have a Princess. We have a Skarmy in the pocket, which is another go-to play. And eventually, boom, takes that tower down. GG's game over there for the new world record against Zodiac. Uh, so like I was saying, guys, if you want to join the community, feel free to go ahead and, uh, and do so. They'll help you out with decks that aren't all legendary decks for starting out your level one account. In fact, I've uploaded another video on no legendary level one decks so you guys might want to go ahead and check out i'll include that uh, that uh video excuse me in the description below as well so here we go guys it's going to be game over on the bottom this time going against a rocket mega knight pump deck man you never know in this range of ladder what deck you're going to be facing sometimes that can be a good thing other times, it can be very difficult, especially as a level one. You just have no idea. And right off the bat here, the opponent uh, the rockets the Inferno Dragon, which probably, I don't know if it was the worst decision, but it didn't really end up helping him that well. He does connect with a couple swings of that Valkyrie, which takes the tower all the way down to 866 HP left. And the pump advantage for the opponent here. So the only way, basically, for Game Over to win this match is to simply outplay his opponent. And that's what he does basically every match. I mean, that's what you have to do when you're a level one. You have to rely on skill and not rely on one of the best resources in the game. Your princess towers, both their hit points to sacrifice in exchange for an elixir advantage, and of course the DPS that it does against your opponent's troops. Uh, fighting on your side of the arena isn't that uh, imperative when you're a level one and your towers don't do any damage, right? So here we go, guys. It's uh, going to be, I think he's going to win this one in one big push here, but we'll have to stay. It might be the next replay. I'm kind of losing track. I watched all of these uh, five or six replays. I will include the rest of the replays that I don't show in this video on Facebook. And I'm starting a second YouTube channel for all of the extra replays on all my pro tip videos uh, that I'll tell you guys about probably next week. But it was a big win in one push there. Boom! Just eating up that Lumberjack's death rage there, taking down that right tower. Ooh, very satisfying feeling. The Inferno Dragon bleeding through that tower and almost getting the uh, the King Tower there. Maybe an additional uh, two seconds or so and that would have been a zip in a three crown for game over but oh, oh he's looking pretty good here and uh it, it's very strange right the opponent why aren't they just rocket cycling you would think if you were the opponent here if you go against a level one maybe just kind of a public service announcement for you guys if you go against a level one player and you're playing rocket well you can just defend and rocket cycle you know uh but either way the opponent decides not to do that for some weird reason here and uh just kind of pump up and and play like a normal match here remember the the uh game over only has you know 1400 hp on his princess tower it's very very easy just to go ahead and defend and that was a chief pataruski rocket there uh totally missed everything no tower no sparky yeah well, let's go ahead and safe to say that his opponent did not make the best plays in this replay play here but hey sometimes you need that you need that to be able to push this high you need to take advantage of mistakes by your opponent and certainly was the case here on the second replay uh, albeit not incredibly uh, impressive by the opponent here so with one second left that's going to be gg and the match is over excuse me <clears throat> for a game over a nice easier uh, opponent there no offense to uh, arisha uh, let's go ahead and watch the one against diego here i have a couple good ones to end off this one another mega knight rocket deck and again you see that rocket and you, you not only are you worried for your your tower health but you're also worried about your sparky right because sparky is like one of your number one weapons especially against beatdown in this deck uh along with of course the inferno dragon and the lumberjack but still that's kind of like the magic trifecta at the heart of this deck defensively uh and unfortunately it's going to be mitigated by the fact that they do have rocket now it looks like game over is is probably going to start with a sparky here i wonder if diego's going to go ahead and rocket it uh neither player really keen on making the first move here i don't know kind of 
of apropos of of nothing, I guess, or I guess of the situation. But uh, how do you guys feel about the whole starting play situation? I've noticed kind of a, a little bit more of a debate going on uh, recently about that. Some people really, really just feel passionately like they love the randomness of the game, uh, and other people think they, they they really prefer fixed card order. Now, rare mistake there by game over, missing that Mega Knight with the log, allowing that Mega Knight to get a little bit more damage. Uh, although he does take care of that E-Wiz, but game over throws the GG. Of course, a psychological play there. He's not going to really give in at this point, and it's a good thing he didn't. Uh, here comes a wizard in the right lane. Now, again, you have to answer everything here when you're playing level 1 decks. It's not like you can just sacrifice a tower because it's so difficult to get a tower down that you just cannot afford to give up a tower, even if your opponent has rocket. Of course, at this point, game over does not know that. So here comes a Skarmy at the bridge here again. Not really doing anything crazy here, just trying to feel out all the cards of the uh, opponent's deck and, and try to get this into double elixir time and try to make something happen. Stack up some troops, of course, just as a bait deck with this deck game over is going to go ahead and plays princess as much as possible in the back so here it goes princess in the left lane we have a, uh, a Pekka in the right lane for the opponent, and here comes our Sparky. Now, the opponent plays the E-Wiz there, and he has a mirror too, so he could like mirror rocket cycle this game out if he wanted to, but uh, again, does not opt to do that. And here comes the Sparky against their, uh, the Pekka there. This time, uh, the rocket comes down there, but again, why are people just, I mean, he, this time he hit the Sparky, which is good. But why didn't he 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 hit the tower too? He could he could have hit both there, couldn't he have? Uh, maybe I missed something there. I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, we're going on with this match here, and and I know what you guys are probably saying right now. I'm sure there'll be a few comments on these guys. Suck. Who cares? Well, I can tell you this: a lot, thousands and thousands of people have tried to hit this trophy high in uh, as a level one and only one guy's been able to do it in fact i think only three people i want to say have ever gotten over 4,000 trophies certainly only one over 4,100 it, it's just a matter of consistency again when the odds are stacked up against you if you're look at this left lane push boom if you're the type of player who gets frustrated by the opponent having the advantage level one is not going to be for you but certainly you can appreciate the uh the gameplay here of uh game over so diego being a good sport he does send in that late rocket but uh send in the GG as there's not enough time uh, so let's go ahead if only he had landed that other one right let's go ahead and show you guys one more okay it was this one that I wanted to share here we go let's watch this one and uh, again it's going against a giant minor deck that is it's just uh, this guy plays it plays it decently but he makes one big mistake and this will really illustrate the importance of switching up your minor locations guys so here we go again game over has that sparky selected he is ready for it and the giant gets down he's gonna go ahead and mirror with the sparky play so again it's gonna be a strong defensive uh, stand here for game over hopefully if things go right and then a big counter push let's see if he can deal with these double dragons behind the giant here so giant double dragon look at this beautiful placement on that he was just barely in range of that inferno dragon but look at that miner on the tower guys it's essentially a level two what used to be a level two miner and look at how much damage the solo miner is doing against that princess tower Man, that's just one minor. Luckily, Sparky gets a couple hits and the Inferno Dragon locks on with the E-Wiz. So we're able to take down their tower. But think of how much firepower we needed to take down the opponent's tower. An E-Wiz, a Sparky. Uh, what else did we have there? We, we had everything, right? And uh, on the other end, just a minor able to chip ours down all the way to 264 damage. So uh, the opponent, all right. So 264 damage left on the tower. Man, this guy sends in this miner like six times to the same location, the bottom right-hand corner of the tower. Now, countering the miner with the sp with the uh, the Skarmy is actually a a good play because you can catch two or sometimes even three sides of the tower. So the choices are a bit limited here for the opponent. But I mean, if I were them, easy in hindsight, but I would just switch it up to the top left-hand side, the opposite side with that miner. But he keeps going in the same direction here. So here comes a Dark Prince 
comes down the right lane, we have a bandit that's going to be killed before she can get the charge off. We're going to go ahead and respawn with a lumberjack, letting the tower do as much little measly damage as possible before we engage. And it's a good thing because look at that, just perfectly timed there. Again, here comes that miner. We catch it again with the skarmy there. Did you guys notice that last that exchange there? The Dark Prince, the perfect lumberjack placement so that that Dark Prince, even though he killed our lumberjack, wasn't able to get any tower damage. Just barely, so close. And those are the small, small little decisions that really come through huge in uh, allowing, uh, oh, look at that beautiful bandit again, allowing her to get the charge in there, distract that Dark Prince from that right tower. Just incredibly well played. You're really, I should have played this match maybe first or second because you're really seeing kind of the decision making from that Ewis to again playing the Lumberjack on the left side, the Skarmy on the right side there. It didn't really matter because they sent the Miner in the same location, but either way, we basically had the whole tower covered there except for right in front of it. And with three seconds left, the opponent's not going to be able to take down that right tower. Very well played there again by Game Over. So guys, another reminder to make sure to go ahead and subscribe to Game Over. Congratulations on getting the new world record, guys. I hope you enjoyed this kind of break from the norm. I like to switch it up here from time to time, do opinion videos and ranking videos and some level one content here and there. So again, huge shout out to Nova One. Uh, I think they have like one or two spots open if you guys want to go ahead and apply with a level one account. Check out Game Over Stats and Player Profile along with his YouTube channel in the description below. Thanks to StatsRoyale.com. And check out my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. His information will also be in the description below. Guys, thanks so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, take care, guys.